So me and the wife are on this keto diet. Well, I don't like to call it diet because it's more like a lifestyle, trying to eat a little better. And keto is Latin for no cookies. Um, so you got to eat good stuff, good stuff from the garden. Can't be eating any junk. So No bread? No bread. Uh, now come tater time, when taters get ready, we might have to cheat a little bit. But... Uh, Right now, we, we stay in on the straight and air. So, been eating a lot of this. That's some of that Skyfoot lettuce. Man, that's pretty stuff here. Now, that's, them heads I've got now are huge. That's probably a third of what's left of the original one. But um, I want to show you one little meal we've been having here. So, take you a piece of that right there. That's your bread right there. That's your bread. That's your bread. And then my wife can make some mighty fine chicken salad. The thing I find with chicken salad is a lot of people overdo it and make it too complicated. Yeah, I like yeah. mine simple, so yeah. I give you. Give me, give me one first. Okay, yeah. and then uh, you just wrap that up in there. Let me get me one here and uh, make you kind of a little taco out of it. What we call it is chicken salad lettuce taco. So whatever you want to call it, it's good eating. And it's healthy. Pretty good, Amp. Yeah, I like that. So like I was saying on the chicken salad, there used to be a place in, uh, or I guess it's still there in Athens, that had the best chicken salad ever. It was called Marty's. And all they put in was cream cheese, maybe a little bit of mayonnaise, and tarragon, which is a herb or spice or whatever. And uh, that's kind of the recipe we go. We, we put pecans in this one, too. Yeah. But I like my chicken salad simple. Anyway, that is good. Let, let's say hey to everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show. We're happy to have you with us this evening. Um, got a good show planned tonight. We're going to talk about cut flowers and attracting pollinators to your garden just a little bit. Uh, right now, we're just sharing a little snack as always and um, talking about the garden a little bit. Keto. Keto. <clears throat> it's been working pretty good. I'm down about 11 pounds. Yeah, well, yeah. Back in the fighting weight. Yeah. So you better watch it. You know, oh, better watch out. Better watch out. Fella gets cocky, he gets to his fighting weight. That's right. What you got over there? Well, I got some, believe it or not. Now this may look like an onion, but this is my shallots. My shallots I've been growing this year. And this is the banana one here, and I think this is the, the reddish one colored here. And they coming along. Now I'm a little, I was late planting them, of course, and, and I'm a little concerned if they're gonna mate well or not. They look like we're gonna be all right. However, I'm not ready to call, make the call yet, but I pulled one the other day and eat it in this stage right here, and it was a little bit on the spicy side. So my thinking is, is after these babies dry down, I think their, ta their, their, their taste is gonna change somewhat. So uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen here. You can tell that one there is getting a little bit of a, a different shape to it there. So that I believe that's the banana shallot. So my impression was that these things kind of multiply, but I haven't noticed no, mine doing that. No, I plant them just like I did my onions, and I think that's the way you grow them. And, and where do they acquire the... When you see them in the store, they kind of have that pinched off shape there. I think that's where the, the stem dries down to. Okay. The green stem dries down to. I'll know more after this season's over with, but that's my thinking so far. Yeah, we was a little late, but we're going to be able to ball this next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, Set that over there. And let's talk about lettuce just for a second. Okay. You know, this is the most ideal time to be growing lettuce is in the early spring. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think lettuce grows better than in the transition times. Fall and springtime is when you really should be growing lettuce. It grows quick. It grows well, and you can enjoy it, and you don't have a lot of other things coming in this time of year. So lettuce is definitely the ones things you need to incorporate into your garden in those swing times of early spring and fall. And even if you live as far south as we do, it's not too late to get some lettuce in. Oh, absolutely. Right you can grow this stuff off quick. In fact, so this is a newer variety we just brought on called Starfighter. And uh, this is, has more of an incised leaf as opposed to that butter crisp. And what does that mean? The, the leaves are kind of... Ruffledy? Yeah. Look at that root system right there. Now, folks, this is what 
a good flat a lettuce transplant is supposed to look like. Yep. If you look all leggy and get this tall, you got problems. You, you got a lot of problems more than likely. You ain't done something right. This is what they should look like when they're ready to go in the ground. And um, so this is the star fried variety. I've got some of this already planted. It's about halfway there. I'm going to get this in, in the ground probably later this week. Um, now, this is 162 plugs of lettuce right here. Yeah. So this, this is a pelleted variety. This is a pellet variety. It's easy to plant. Now, this here, if you put it out in the garden, space is a foot apart, you can plant yourself a lot of lettuce out of one flat. I even do mine on about eight inches. Yeah, but if you wanted to plant on an emitter or whatever, right. anywhere from eight to 12 inches would be the ideal space. Yeah. So this is pelleted seed, and with it being pelleted, it makes it easy just to put one seed per cell, and you can see pretty dang good germination rate on those. I would say close to... They might be one or two empty cells in that whole 162. Yeah, if there. you've had problems growing lettuce before, and I have way back in the day, you need to quit trying to direct seed it and grow it from a transplant and put it in there, and I think you'll be successful. Yeah. That's good. one of the tricks of, of growing lettuce. These good transplants here work real good. So we're going to do a, I'm going to do a video. I've been growing a ton of lettuce this year and turning over, rotating between lettuce and bok choy and different things, and I'm going to do a video showing how we do crick quick crop turnover quick crop over yeah <laughs> quick crop turnover after we're done with one crop how we can go in there clean it up real quick with the wheel hoe and our new stirrup hoe put the drip right back down put some lettuce down and just have food all the time yep so we're going to talk about that on a two minute tip coming up and um, that's going to be really good what else? We got a lot to talk about. Let's here. talk about them right there. So these are our leeks, and from what I, I did, did, a little online research videos trying to see folks uh, videos of folks cooking these things. You can see the tops on those are big. Do it this way. Now I didn't plant any of those. We just had enough for you to try these. But yeah. I'm gonna tell you, you did a great job with them. These look wonderful to me. The tops look more like elephant garlic yep. than they do onions or shallots. But now these are in the eating stage, correct? That's where you want that. What I was getting to before you interrupted <laughs> me was uh, <laughs> the the videos I saw with folks cooking these. They looked like they was about these size, this size. Now all of mine ain't this size. I cherry picked these to kind of show you how far along some of them were. Um, so I, the way they been cooking them that I've seen, let me get my knife out here, is they'll take and they'll just barely cut the ends off these roots, obviously, you don't want to eat those, okay? And then they'll take and cut this about right here, and peel that off, and then that's what you got right there. Now some folks I've seen We'll cut this in half or half and put it on the grill. Some folks are cooking the whole thing. They also say you cut up little pieces and use it in your stock pot with the chicken broth for making soups and stuff. But they say it's mighty fine on the grill, just like that. Have you tasted one of them? Not raw, I have not. Well, it's not a big good time. It would be. Got a little dirt on it. Cut on, cut me a piece. Wow, that's getting... a little different. Got a little spice to it. Got a little hot on the end, not on the front part. Tastes a little different. Probably be a good grill like yeah, that. Yeah, it would be. You eat the whole thing. Yep. That's um, enough for right now, though. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It, it grows differently in the onion. It grows in rings a right. di different kind of way than the onion does. Yep. Um, so... Those are coming along. We're going to start pulling those soon. And I'm going to grow some next year. I really next year, I'm going to, these were really easy to grow. And um, these are not day length sensitive like your onions or your shallots are. Yeah. And we planted these in January. And so they can't, they jumped on pretty fast. Now, this is a fresh sheet. And this, you don't store these. This is not a storable type thing. They'll last anywhere up to, to a month, maybe in the refrigerator, if you leave the tops on. But it's not like an onion that you can store it for a long period of time. You have to eat them fresh, basically. They appear to hold well in the ground, though. Yeah. So you can just go out and pull you a few as you need them. But I'm going to grow a whole plot of them next year. I've uh, I've really been happy with my leeks, the way they turned out. Um, so we got new for this year for us is leeks and shallots. 
Yeah. And, and, a, and a couple of these varieties of lettuce maybe that we hadn't grown before. Right, right. Yeah, we got a new variety. I meant to mention earlier we were talking about lettuce. A new variety of romaine that just hit the site called Cow Shot, which is a green and red. It's kind of got that color that the sky Fudge does, green and red romaine, and I'm going to start some of those. Is it pelleted? Yes, it is pelleted, and uh, I'm really excited about trying those. Um, what else is going on in the garden? I've got Brussels sprouts that are finally putting on sprouts, and they say to go in there and pop the top off of them um, when they do that to get more energy into the sprouts. So, got that going on. I got kohlrabi getting close to the stage of harvest, and it's doing good. I got collards ready to collards harvest. Collards is ready, yep. I uh, have some worm problems with my collards, but they, we've been eating collards. I've been spraying mine pretty regularly. Um, I got my okra planted my transplants planted yesterday you will have a video on that coming out i think next week um, i got two rows of jambalaya and two rows of red burgundy and i i'll you'll you'll hear this on the video but i'll go ahead and tell you again right now if you like to grow just a little bit of okra go to your local feed and seed store and get you some of that cheap clemson spineless but if you want to grow a lot of okra Get you some jambalaya or some red burgundy. Yep. Um, you won't never go back. That's right. And I always don't never plant enough okra. I always run out, don't have enough. So I planted four rows this year. Ooh, somebody's going to be cutting okra. And uh, I'm, I'll be the first one around here with any okra because I don't know anybody else that transplants. You probably will. Um, so I've got two plots left in my dream garden to plant. i got to plant my winter squash. And I got to plant my peppers and eggplant. We stepped up peppers. They're getting close. I'm in the same stage you are. That's the two things I like. Lack. And, and flowers, which we'll get to in just a minute. Um, your potatoes. I know you're mighty proud of your potatoes. Man, I am a little. But, uh, and I should, I don't have any photo evidence. Well, if you it's, ain't got pictures, you can't brag <laughs> about it. But, the, uh, you know, my, my potatoes is chugging along at my house. And they, they finally starting to look um, reputable. But uh, the ones at my consultant farm, man, you talking about some fine looking taters. They make your taters look kind well, of Well, now we grow in taters when we ain't growing vines. Keep that in mind. I know, too. but these, we got these things healed yeah. up. It's going Well, Gardening with Greg may have a little tater video coming out pretty soon. And we'll oh, talk about, okay. We'll okay. talk about it. You going to give a little tater tip? Maybe. Okay. All right. So uh, now we'll get into tonight's main topic. And as we talk about any of this, as always, if you have any questions, Put those in the comments, and we'll be glad to answer them on next week's show. So a few weeks ago, we had our guest, uh, Gary. Mm -hmm. um, Believe. Honey. Gary from Believe Farms. Yep. And uh, I hope some of y'all been able to get in touch with Gary and uh, maybe get set up on some bees. We talked about pollinators and the importance of pollinators in the vegetable garden. Of course, bees is one of those things you can have, but you can also bring in, you know, natural pollinators that aren't from say a beehive that you have right there at the house mm -hmm. and we could do that by interplanting cut flowers or flowers in the garden and a lot of people think about oh i've got my flowers over there by the house and i've got my garden here i don't really intermix the two but a few years ago we started interplanting flowers amongst the vegetables and you'd be surprised how well it works yeah i love to we'll get to sunflowers in a second but i like to use sunflowers as a cover crop as a scavenger crop so to give you an example on my corn just as soon as my corn gets through i go in there and chop it off i get that stalk out of the way i got my drip plate there and i got all those nutrients i used to grow that corn and i can come back right there on top of it and plant my sunflowers right on top of it. i did that last year and it worked out wonderful Scavenge kept those nutrients in the cycle there. I grew a great crop of sunflowers, and I really didn't have to do nothing but to plant them. Mm -hmm. So um, they can give you some ground cover. They're going to bring in some pollinators. They're also going to bring in some beneficial insects, which are going to help you out. All these benefits to cut flowers. And, and not to mention, if, if you do happen to... Um, make your old lady upset a little bit the wife the wife the wife upset a little bit um the, as we all prone to do from time to time the flowers can get you out of a tight yeah and they can also get your buddy out of a tight yep. if you got a buddy that uh you know he might need to come over and pick him a few flowers too. never know that's a good it's a good it's a good thing to have as a as a tool 
in right. the arsenal. Yeah. Have them out there ready. And, and I and I and I'm assuming you are too, but I'm fairly secure in my manhood, and and I don't have a problem telling you I like to grow flowers. I don't have a problem with them. I appreciate them, and I like them. I like to look at them. I appreciate growing them, and they just fun for me to grow. So I always grow me some flowers in the garden. Mm -hmm. Makes the garden look pretty. Just makes you smile. Makes happy. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go through <clears throat> some of these varieties here. Now, all these ones we have, uh, you could direct seed them or you could grow, grow them from transplants. Uh, a majority of these we grow from transplants just because it makes it a little easier. And mm -hmm. what I recommend folks doing, and I've talked to a couple people on the phone in the last few weeks about doing this. Okay, you, you started, you, you had your peppers and your eggplant, and your tomatoes, all that stuff in your seed trays. Once you're done growing your vegetable transplants and you got that yep. stuff out of the way, turn around, fill those trays back up, and plant you some cut flowers in there, and then you'll be good to go. Yeah. Um, I like to use cut flowers in my rotation because they're not as heat sensitive as some of my vegetables on my plant. So when my vegetable starts coming off where we're at in the first part of June, and as soon as they get through it, then I come right behind it with, I have some flowers growing before them, but I'll come right behind it with some sunflowers and some zinnias and other things because they absolutely love the heat. Don't have a problem with insects on them. And I can grow those throughout that period of time where I have trouble growing vegetables before I start getting my fall crop in. Wonderful to grow in the middle of the summer in the garden. Right, so with the flowers, it's not like the, with the vegetables, we a lot of times feel like we're at a race and getting it in early so we can get that crop off before, you know, humidity and bug pressure comes along and gets real bad. With the, the flowers, we've got a little time so we can... You know, it's a good filler crop. I ain't never thought about that. It's a great filler crop is your sunflowers and your zinnias and your cosmos and your coxcomb. Let's mm -hmm. get into it. Okay, let's dig into <coughs> it here. All right, so first we're going to talk about... Um, let's go with these these right here first. The the non zinnia and non sunflower stuff. Because we got a lot of zinnias, a lot of sunflowers, and we'll get to those in just a minute. Let's talk about some of these. So the first one we have is this one here called Ageratum. And the particular variety we have is called Blue Horizon. And this is a all these varieties that we have chosen here, we we have some experts that we consulted on which ones which varieties we should carry. And all these have real long stems. <clears throat> have a nice height to them. Uh, so the long stems are nice for cut flowers and then you like that height just because it gives you kind of a nice robust appearance in your garden. So this ageratum here makes a little purple flower that grows in clusters there and a real popular cut flower variety. Um, I, I got nothing on that. I know nothing about it. That's a new one for me this year that I'm going to try to grow and we're going to see how it does, but I got nothing on it. I can't even see it. Ageratum? Ageratum. <coughs> I got uh I, get, I got a good tip on this one that this was a good one. Who you got your expert here? Is her name would be Lisa, would it? Well, I, I can't. I can't. Okay. I can. A uh, lady named Lisa is all we're gonna say. That's right. Um, so that one I got some of that started in a seed tray, and this one's pelleted, which makes it a lot easier to plant. Then we've got Cosmos, and most people have heard of Cosmos before, and you can get regular old Cosmos in a lot of your wildflower mixes and stuff like this but this is a special mix called versailles and it grows taller too it's got the long stem so you can Boy, these things it. it's hardy it's about seven weeks from the time you see them until you start getting your flowers and these are also great for butterflies so if you're into butterflies this is probably the best one to grow out there for hold them. that right there and i'll show y'all what some of these look like in the trays so mm -hmm. aren't those pretty yep now those got some nice looking stems on. It won't be a long time, uh, and well, I won't step real. those up. I'll, yep. I'll pop those right in the garden on some drip tape, probably. Yep. So those cosmos are coming along there, and they will reseed. So if you have an area there, let's just take for granted. If you had an area around your house, you wanted to plant some, let them go all the way, and they'll bloom all the way to frost, and let them go all the way to seed. They will reseed themselves somewhat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to just keep mine kind of pruned up and. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then the next one, next two we got, are Celosia varieties. So we have two, two varieties of Celosia. We have this one, the Chief Mix, which a lot of people call Coxcomb. Coxcomb yeah. 
And this is old variety. You may remember your grandmother growing these. These are, if you do cut flowers, these are nice. But uh, you probably remember these back in your grandmother's garden. Been around a long time. Not as quite as proper as what they used to be, and I really don't know why. They make some nice, big, strong stems. The flowers are real, real good size. Uh, I really like those a lot. Uh, those are a great, great garden plant there. You want to keep those harvested a little bit so they don't reseed or plant them kind of on the edge of the garden. And then the other variety of celosia we have is this century mix, and it makes a blue, whereas that one kind of looks like a rooster comb. This one here looks like a kind of a fire plume almost. Or a small <coughs> miniature Christmas tree. That too. Um, I like these a lot. I actually saw some of those at uh, Lowe's the other day. They were selling some of those for outrageous price. Mm. Um, so both of those celosia varieties are And good. those are, boy, those are heat loving and drought tolerant. So if you if you got an area there that's going to be hot and dry, that's probably the, the flower you want to grow. And the last one here I'll mention, although you don't really want to plant it this time of year, is this calendula prince mix. So this is your marigold that's bred to be kind of a cut flower too. And these things have all kind of benefits for beneficial insects and helping with your uh, pest control. But this is more of a cool weather. So we'll wait till fall. Fall, to, you could plant them early, early spring. You could plant them late? early spring. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna wait till fall okay. on those. Okay. Now you wanna do Sunflowers or zinnias? Let's talk sunflowers. Okay, all right. So we have quite a few varieties of sunflowers we brought on. We've got uh, this whole Pro Cut line. And if you've never grown the Pro Cut sunflowers, that is a variety that was specifically bred for the cut flower industry. But it does really well in the vegetable garden. Um, you can plant it with our garden seeder. You can take a number three seed plate, drill out the holes a little bit. It plants really well with the garden cedar. You can plant them on drip tape or not. Um, they don't get super tall, probably five or six five foot. Five or at the six most. foot, they're really manageable, and then they, they pollinate. So when you do cut them off that big head and put them in a vase on your table or wherever they don't drip by it's pollen. It's not going to make a mess everywhere. It is the premier cut flower sunflower, hands down. And we've got quite a few colors here and some new ones out there that a lot of people don't got. We've got this Pro Cut Red, mm -hmm. which is a new one. It's really pretty. We've got the Standby Pro Cut Orange, which is probably the, the one people are most familiar with. Right. We've got the Pro Cut Red Lemon Bicolor. So that one is red and yellow. We've got the Lemon here, which we've grown before. Yeah, I like that one. And We've got this one here called the Plum, which is uh, kind of yellow and red. And then this one here, which is a new one, which I'm excited to try. It's this the White, white Night. White Night. Cut. So uh, what I'm planning on doing is doing kind of a little montage of these Pro Cut colors, having me a couple rows of each color. And I think it's going to turn out real pretty. Now keep in mind, these Pro Cut series sunflowers are going to cost more because it is bred specifically for the cut flower industry. And we're bringing them to you so that you can plant them in your home garden. So they're going to cost more, but understand it's going to be worth the extra cost versus the ones you go buy, the regular sunflowers that uh, that you buy wherever you can get the bird seed, whatever comes in, the regular sunflower. These are going to cost more, but they're going to be well worth it, especially if you're going to use them as a, a cut flower. That's right. All right, so the one we got here is called Teddy. We got another one called Teddy Bear. So these are the non-pro cut. The non-pro cut. And the Teddy Bear is the extremely popular one right here. Love to grow these in the garden. I, if I was going to grow four cut flowers, I wouldn't grow this. But if you just like to enjoy them in the garden, these are some good varieties to grow. Old teddy bear, and it gets his name because it is such pretty and it's such fluffy. It's got a velvety bloom, looks like a fluffy. feels like a teddy bear. Then we got the Alden Beauty Sunflower Mix, which is a taller variety. Am I correct? Uh, relatively. Not, yeah, not too bad. It doesn't say the height. It doesn't on say the there. height on there. I had planted these before, so these are kind of a mix. So if you just want to mix, and enjoy some sunflowers. This is a good one to go with right here. Joker. I've actually got some of these growing in the in the greenhouse. So those, whereas the Pro Cut produce one bloom per stalk. These are branching. Those are branching and supposedly they make and make and make. I wanna, I'm excited to try the Joker. Uh, those are also yeah, highly recommended. Yeah, I got a flat of these growing. And then we got the American Giant Sunflower. Now this is the one that gets real tall 
And I tell you what, my wife likes to plant these on the backdrop of her garden. Mm -hmm. And she's the one, she said, I want tall ones. I don't want the Pro Cut series because they're going to be the backdrop. I'm going to let them bloom. I'm going to enjoy them out in the garden. Now, these is the ones grow for that right there. Yeah, if you plant a little hedgerow along your garden, maybe you want a little privacy in your garden. Privacy. Maybe you like to get out in your garden with your shirt off or yeah. out there and you don't want your neighbors looking over at you. You know, plant you a row of those right there. Or maybe you're trying to keep some animals out. Those, these right here, they average 14 foot tall. Now, and there's reports of some of my people out there growing them 17 foot tall. And then the heads on them are a foot in diameter. Wow. Yeah, so, they uh, big. They big old, big old sunflowers. Now, sunflowers in general lend their self to direct seeding. Although we're doing some testing this year because we've got some friends that do transplant. So we're testing that. But they do lend their self well to direct seeding. It's a big enough seed that you can plant directly into the ground. They're easy to plant, and they're pretty, pretty good to come up, and they just tend to tend to work good that way. And you can plant them right on top of that drip tape. Yeah. Works yeah. great. All right, now let's get into our zinnias here. We got a bunch of zinnias as well. We, we kind of... We went all in on the flower. Zinnia overload. All right, so we've got our binary giant mix, and this is this is going to give you a, a good variety of colors: yellow, red, uh, orange, a few whites, pinks, and so forth. This is probably the most popular one here. Is the mix, and you can direct seed the, these as well. I've done it before. But you can also grow them from transplant. Show them what the um, the tray there looks like and these are almost ready to go in too yep now this is the mix right here that i'm showing you yeah and those are uh they're not quite ready they yeah, ain't too bad yeah they're so those are getting close yeah. there uh ready to go in the ground and we'll have to do some videos there's some tricks to these once they start growing up a little bit away you can cut the tops off of them and get some real nice lateral growth so I've been growing these for years. These things make and yeah. make and make and do yeah. well in the heat. Yep. So we've got the mix there and then we've got the individual ones here that we'll kind of zip through. We've got, if you want just the coral color, we've got that one. If you want just the orange color, you can get that one. If you want just the scarlet color, you can get that one. Scarlet. If you want just the wine color, you can get that one. I feel like I'm on QVC here. Yeah. Now this one, the white one, I will tell you, this is my wife's favorite. She likes the white one. Really? The problem, I won't say a problem, but I'll go ahead and tell you, because we don't make, we don't mix the mix ourselves. Uh, in the mix, you'll get a few white ones, but you don't get a lot of white ones. So she likes me to plant a row of just the white ones, so we have plenty of those. So. The, the, the white ones and then this one is not in the mix and this is my favorite which is the lime colors that's anyway. a top seller it's not my favorite by the way it's not your favorite not but this favorite. is one of the most popular ones out there and this is not in the mix and i've got some of this started so you need to if you want the lime you have to get it separately from the mix and these are really pretty um kind of light lime green color out there let me give you just a little bit of tip on plant when you start planting your solid colors if you're going to plant solid colors, you want to plant a complete block of that particular color. It's more appeasing to the eye when you do that. If you're going to plant you one row, get the mix and plant it. But if you're going to try to make a big impact in your garden and you want it really colorful, plant you one whole block of one particular color and it'll be a lot better than trying to plant a row one color, a row in another color, and a row in another color. It didn't work as well that way. So either do the mix or either do you some blocks of the different colors. I got you. Now, there's not a garden seeder on the market that does a good job planting zinnias directly. You can shake them out there and they will come up. We've done it. I've done it for years, planting zinnias like that. We've got to the point where we just like to grow them from transplants. It's just, it's just a lot easier. Well, it's, it's, <clears throat> you can serve seed better a little that way by growing them from transplants. Now, in the past, I've done them just like I do carrots where I'll, I'll do me a double row and that little, I'll sprinkle them on that furrow there. You end up having to do a little bit of thinning there and uh, the transplants are the best way to get you both bang for your buck from yep. your seed. So uh, that's kind of what we recommend doing there. All right, so 
Any cut flower questions, any more questions about any of these varieties, put those in the comments. And uh, if you have any other cut flowers you like that we don't carry, let us know and uh, we'll be glad to yep. check on bringing them on. So we're going to get to our questions this week. And as always, if we answer your question on the show, um, send us their email to cussserve at hostels.com with your address and we'll send you a nice little prize. So our first question here is from Beth Mitchell. And uh, you want to read this one? Beth asks, our taters were real slow too, as in yours were, but they have picked up. Should we side dress taters? So I side dress mine with some of that special chicken manure mix compost kind of stuff we got. I haven't needed to. Mine look great with that. I haven't needed to put any uh chilean nitrate or any other fertilizer on there so i've side dressed them with that compost if you don't have some good manure based compost you can use some granular fertilizer if you're using the granular fertilizer and you don't have access to what we do the good compost and the chicken manure the thing about the chicken manure is you get a boost when it, when, you, when you first plant and then you get a boost low normal so if you're using chicken litter it's a great source to fertilize your taters with boom 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 however if you don't have that and you're using synthetic fertilizers then you need to put half the recommended rate down when you plant, and then you need that side dress to half the recommended rate later on after they get up about yay tall. Let's just take for granted. You side dress it right three before you heal it? Right before, right before you heal it, about three to four inches away from the plant. Let's just take for granted that you're using a 15-15-15, which is a naturally balanced fertilizer. You want to use 15 pounds of that per 1,000 square feet. You want to put seven pounds down at pre-plant, and then you want to go back and put seven pounds as your side dress up when they get up. Mm -hmm. Follow? I'm following. Now, with our chicken manure compost, we aren't quite That's as... different. Throws it off the game. You still... We ain't as act precise you with that. You precise with that. And you can play around with these requirements a little bit because that actual, that middle 15 there is phosphorus, and potatoes don't need as much phosphorus as they do nitrous potassium. So if you got a hold of some 15015, you can do the same thing. You need to know your, your phosphorus, how much phosphorus load you have in your soil. But that just gives you a general guidelines of what you need to do. 15 pounds of 15, 15, 15, half of it at pre-plant, and then half of it at side dress. Gotcha, gotcha. So the, the answer to the question, yes, you should be putting something on them. Yes. Okay. And then our second question comes from Laura. I don't know if that's Pickard or Picard. Uh, my apologies, but she wants to know, she says, can we talk about white flies? I live in the dry desert of Phoenix and once it gets dry, 90 degrees plus, the white flies are thicker than a New England blizzard. Ooh, boy, then white flies can be tough. And you know, when we have a dry summer here, we know we're gonna have a tough white fly, white, white fly problem. <laughs> now, last year we had plenty of rain and the white flies weren't bad at all. It's one of the, the Best years we've had on white flies was last year, and it's because we had rain during the time. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. But when we have those dry summers, we just get inundated with white flies, and they're nearly impossible to control. And sometimes, I'll be honest, we just give up in that, on our fall crop. There is one thing that I have found that helps somewhat. There is an insect growth regulator out there called NAC, and it's spelled K-N-A-C-K. If you can get your hands on some, it does seem to help somewhat when you're fighting those white flies. But there's no silver bullet out there, and it can be a tough one. And, and even the big commercial guys around here on those bad years struggle with them. Yeah, it, it seems like August, September is when it sure enough gets bad mm -hmm. on us. Um, all right, so hopefully that helped y'all out. Uh, glad. Thanks for sending us those questions there, and uh, we'll get to some more questions on next week's show. Thank y'all for watching tonight. As always, if you're watching on Facebook, hit that like and share button. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And uh, we will see you guys on next week's Take show. Take care.